over the last while, we've um, offered you questions along the way, and, and uh, we had one at the beginning of the service, but I want to ask you a poll question with, uh, with uh, multiple choice answers, and this is in reference to our theme today of tr transition. And uh, so I'm going to ask David and Jeff to put up the question now, um, the poll question. The, qu the question is, how well do you deal with transition and change? Very well. Change is exciting. I just deal with it. It's part of life. It's okay, but I don't like it. And lastly, it stresses me out. It stresses me out. So just take a few minutes, and I apologize to those of you on the telephone who don't have an opportunity to, to click your computer. But if you'd like to send us an email or, or send me something in that response, that would be great. So the question again is, how well do you deal with change and transition? Very well, change is exciting. I deal with it, it's part of life. It's okay, but I don't like it. And it stresses me out. So we've got uh, 40, almost 50% say I deal with it, it's part of life so far. 24% said very well, change is exciting. 13% so far says it's okay, but I don't like it. And 13% also say it stresses me out. Just to give it another five or 10 seconds, we've had about 83% of you have voted so far. So I'll give it another 15 seconds. Let's see if we can get it up. There we go, okay. All right, so it's just consistent. So it's uh, almost 50% say I deal with it, it's part of life. And second is very well. And lastly, it's okay, but I don't like it. And tied just under, it stresses me out, lastly. Thank you for that. So I'm really, um, I really sort of say this, but as I think we can all tell, something's happening outside. As we're beginning to view the changing color of the occasional tree around the town, we know that this transition from summer to autumn has begun. And I really am sorry to say that in the not too distant future, we may be chipping ice off of our cars or even snow off of our sidewalks. Can't believe that we're already dealing with frost warnings. Autumn is a transitional season, a transitional time. And this seasonal transition comes to us year after year. And generally, we pay no attention to it. Most of us do not give, get anxious about this changing of seasons. But we do pay much more attention to those transitions in our lives that are not so regular or customary. Many of the transitions of our lives have to do with the cycles of living. These kinds of transitions are often filled with great emotion for us. We grow up, we leave home, we make a place for ourselves in the world. Many of us will find a life partner and we will make a new home. Some of us will raise children and see them grow through their own transitions of life. The latter years of our lives may present other transitions into things like health challenges or mobility concerns or facing our latter years in new living circumstances. Such moments can be deeply emotional and very difficult. Sometimes it takes special resolve to make it through the more difficult transitions. Usually reflecting on the transitions after they, after they are done and over can give us a larger and different perspective. It's not quite so easy to reflect upon transitions when we are in the midst of them. For example, I survived having three teenagers, and it seemed to me like those teenage years were never going to end. And then suddenly, at the end of it all, they emerged, as I call it, out of this tunnel. And conversations were longer than five or six words. Seldom do we look at the transitions of our lives through the eyes of our faith. But the first reading we heard Mary read this morning, this lovely poem written by Marjorie Dobson, so beautifully presents the challenge and dichotomy of life and its transitions. 
And I just want to take a few of those sentences of the, those poems just to remind you of what she said again. She said, autumn is a dying time, a withering and a drying time. Fallen leaves go back to the earth, reabsorbed to bring new birth. Autumn is a blessing time. A God will keep us guessing time. Empty branches on them bare. Sleeping buds to wake next year. Transitions can be dis disconcerting, unnerving, and even sometimes scary. Scary time of life. St. Paul in the second reading was in the midst of one of these major life transitional moments. He was in prison again. Allegedly, he was in um, prison in the mid six, uh, 60s of, uh, after, uh, after Christ. He was in house arrest, under house arrest, and he was still in communicate, he was still communicating with his friends and his followers. And he was talking about putting his ultimate trust and faith in Christ and in God and his resilience and confidence in his future, no matter what the outcome was, was extraordinary. He was even suggesting that life after his death would be better than what he had now. His death was imminent, he believed. Some would say that this absolute faith in life after death was almost superhuman beyond comprehension for some of us. And being held in prison, he was assuring his friends and his followers that, and I believe he was assuring himself, that even if he died, that all would be well. He saw his death as a positive, even as a preferred alternative in that he would be with Christ. If only I might have that same assurance and confidence and faith as St. Paul did. But what the story from Paul reminds me is that in any transition or change in life, there can be opportunities for new life, new hope, new beginnings. Mm -hmm. We continue to live today in such a time. The COVID-19 virus continues. It continues to shape and to change the way we live the way we engage with family and friends, the way we recreate and spend our time. And as time moves on with no end of this in sight, we grieve what was. The reality is beginning to set in. We yearn for how things were and as this time passes, the reality of how profound this transitional time of life and history may be for us, it begins to take hold. We are being forced to reevaluate what, what is important to us. What is it we care about the most? What are the values and the priorities that we live by? In the season of creation too, we must be reminded of the dangerous transitions that our environment is in in the midst of. Our planet Earth is under siege. We see the unprecedented climate fires that are raging on the West Coast. Most witnesses and seasoned professional firefighters are saying that they have never seen anything like this. This past July, we witnessed the breakup of our country's last fully intact ice shelf on Ellesmere Island in Nunavut. It's referred to as the Milne Ice Sheet. This Milne Ice Sheet, it broke up and was reduced by 43% and was larger than the island of Manhattan itself. This island of ice 
floated out into the Arctic Sea and broke into pieces. The oceans around the world continue to rise. And it is estimated that in 30 years, 150 million people worldwide will be displaced by these rising oceans. The Marshall Islands in the mid-Pacific will all but have completely disappeared. Living in this in-between time of these transitional moments of history, we cannot see the outcome, the end, and what the ultimate effect will be on us as individuals and on our planet home. The, to quote the poem again, empty branches seem so stark, stripped to bare and simple bark. But then we hear, autumn is a blessing, blessing time. A God will keep us guessing time. Empty branches then bear sleeping buds to wake next year. St. Paul said and reminds us that we all have a role to play. We must live in faith and confidence that together we can weather this storm. But we must be proactive and take measures. We must not be passive, lose hope, or be resolved that this is it. St. Paul said, as long as I'm alive in this body, there is good work for me, for us to do. So I, we plan to be around a while. Companions to you as your growth and joy in this life of trusting God continues. Throughout the course of our human history, we have lived through transitional moments that have changed the course of life. And as we do now, we must stay the course, not lose hope, and that with our perseverance, our determination and faith in God, the God who keeps us guessing, that will truly see this autumn of history will be a blessing where the empty branches will reveal the buds of new birth and a new beginning for us and our mother earth. Thanks be to God. Amen.